Hi there, today we're going to be talking about the double O seven, which are seven words that have an O at the end of their root, meaning if you made a noun out of them, you'd have two O's at the end right next to each other. Several of these words, if you looked up all of them in a dictionary, you'd notice that many of them are medical or scientific in nature. For example, spermatozoo is the word for spermatozoa, or sperm cell. Well, you're not going to use that very often. And even if you did and you didn't enunciate the second O, it's still pretty clear what you're talking about. Whereas these ones that I've picked out are important to keep straight because if you don't pronounce that second O very clearly, it can sound like a totally different word with a totally different meaning. So I'm going to show you both of these words uh, side by side, the O and then the double O form, so you can see how important it is to say what you mean. These are the double O seven. Heroo, troo, metroo, poloo, kvinoo, sumoo, and buroo. Let's take a closer look at each one. First, we have kvino and kvinoo. Kvino is a five of something, a quintet, we would say. The dynamic duo, the terrific trio, the fantastic four. Well, here you could say la charisma kvino, the charismatic five. Kvinoo is the word for quinoa. Often when you translate something from English or a similar language to Esperanto, any Q-U words become K-V words instead. And that's what happened here. Kvinoo instead of quinoa. So, la quinoa electo estas bongusta. The quinoa choice is tasty. By using it in the adjective form there, quinoa, it looks more like quinoa. So, if that helps you memorize it, think of it adjectivally instead. But know that if you made a noun out of it, you need to have two O's there. Sumo and sumo -o. Sumo is simply a sum, the product of addition. Two plus two is four. That is the sum of two plus two. sumo -o is the word for sumo wrestling. Now, in English, we normally say... Uh, oh, I'm going to go watch some sumo wrestling. He's a sumo wrestler. Whereas you wouldn't say, oh, he's a karate fighter. You wouldn't say that. Or he's a, you know, a football player. We're going to watch some football playing. Well, sumo -o encapsulates the idea of the sport thoroughly. So you don't have to say sumo a luktarto or anything like that. You can just say sumo -o and we get it. We understand what you're watching. La sumo istoi habas sumo ein nomoin. The sumo wrestlers have sumo names, sort of like Dwayne Johnson calls himself The Rock when he's wrestling, right? Uh, here in, or I guess in Japan, they also have their own sumo names uh, that they use as, as code names to get famous by. And then you could say, Chiu havas sumon de du nomoi. So each has a sum of two names, their wrestling name and their real name. So you see the difference? Sumon and sumoon. Keep them straight. Next, we have probably the most common double O word you're going to come across, and that is hero and hero. So hero is a proper name. It is, in Greek mythology, the priestess of Aphrodite who falls in love with Leander. It's also a character in Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, note that in Much Ado About Nothing, the heroes of the play who do the most stuff would probably be Beatrice and Benedict. Hero is a much smaller character, not the protagonist by any means. Uh, but in Esperanto, it's clear that hero is just a name. It's not describing the person. Uh, because if you want to describe them as a hero, you would use the hero -o form. A person with heroic qualities is a hero, or a hero. -o. And the female form is heroino. Now, if you just thought, oh, hero is hero, then technically you'd have to say herino is a heroine. And that doesn't sound like heroine at all. Whereas if you have the extra O there, it stays when you add the I-N in there. So heroino is similar to heroine, like we would call Wonder Woman a heroine. So if that helps, keep the female form in mind when you revert back to the male form, which would be hero. -o. Note as well that not always is the main character in something a hero or has heroic qualities. So sometimes you just need to say they're a protagonist, protagonisto, or la chef rolulo, the chief role person, okay? Tro and tro. -o. So tro is an adverb, or arguably maybe an adjective in some cases, or it's, a, it's not a noun. Tro means too, as in too much of something, or too quickly, or too slowly, or what have you. But if you just said tro, and try to use it as a noun, it would be confusing. Like, what, what's the missing word? Because you, you, 
tro doesn't belong by itself, whereas tro'o would mean an excess or a superfluity of something, and that one can stand by itself as a noun there. Now, that's the only case where they are related. All these other ones, if you take the extra o out, it's not even closely related. It has totally different meaning, whereas these are related, but it's just clear what the form is and the use is by adding the extra o there. Metro is a meter, which is a unit of measurement. It also applies to a meter in you know, poetry and rhyming and, and so on. Whereas metro -o is a metro or a subway train. It can also apply to an overhead train. Uh, but those aren't very common here in the United States, so I don't really think of those. When I say metro -o, I think of an underground train. So metro -o and metro are very different. Finally, we'll look at the last two, which uh, you might not be too confused with because they are dealing with nationalities. They are polo and polo, and then buro and buro. -o. So polo is the word for a person or from or a citizen of Poland. Now our words for Poland, you can take your pick, are polio, polando, and poluio. Whereas polo, -o, completely unrelated, is the sport of polo. If you said akvopolo, you'd be saying akvopolo, -o, you'd be saying water polo. And just for clarity's sake, in case you see the word polio and you think, oh, didn't one of the presidents have that where he had to be in a wheelchair all the time? We're not talking about the disease of polio because that would be poliomyelito. Very, very different. Finally, burro is like the Boers, which are Dutch people who settled in Africa in the late 17th century. Can't say I've used that word lately and you probably haven't either, but just know if you say burro, that's what you're saying. Whereas buro is a bureau, as in an office or department for a specific particular business. And burokrato, also unrelated, is a bureaucrat or a government official. So you could say la bura burokrato visitis la buroon. The Boer bureaucrat visited the bureau. But that extra O makes a lot of difference. So those are your double O seven. If this video has left you not shaken, but stirred. To learn more vocabulary, then great. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, etc. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.